This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 528, Money and the Law of Attraction, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm Dan, your host, and this is where I read to you from some of the best blogs on personal finance. And today's article is a continuation from yesterday's episode, so it'll make a lot more sense to you if you uh, hear that first. If you're new here or skipping around, I would recommend checking out Tuesday's show. That would be episode 527. But if you heard yesterday's, if you're all caught up, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Money and the Law of Attraction, part two by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. A businessman thinks $24,000 is a fair price for an hour of his time. Earlier this year, I spent a few hours talking with a businessman who consults for $24,000 per hour. And yes, people actually pay him that amount. In a short period of time, he can help his clients optimize their businesses in such a way that this is a profitable exchange for them. If I tell him I'm charging $500 per hour for a consultation, there's a good chance he'll laugh at me, as if I'm suffering from low self-esteem or something. Is a 30-minute consultation with this man really worth as much as 24 hours of consulting with me? Does he have 48 times the business knowledge, experience, and insight as I do? Of course not. He gets paid this amount because he's a match for receiving it. To him, this is normal. For me, it would still seem amazing or incredible. Becoming a match for a million-dollar home. Many years ago, Aaron and I were on vacation in San Diego. At the time, we were basically broke and deep in debt. We were driving around Rancho Santa Fe, a wealthy neighborhood with homes that cost a few million dollars each. As we drove past a real estate office, an idea struck me, and I asked Erin if she wanted to have some fun. She consented. I walked into the realtor's office and confidently proclaimed that Erin and I were interested in buying a house in Rancho Santa Fe, something in the two to four million dollar range. I knew that was a reasonable price range because Erin and I had checked out the listings taped to the office window before we walked in. I was probably 25 years old. A realtor welcomed us and asked us a few questions. I answered honestly that I ran a software company in Los Angeles. Next thing I knew, the realtor was driving us around in her Jaguar, shuttling me and Aaron to various homes for sale in the area. Aaron and I had a fun time pretending we could actually afford them while trying not to look like total idiots. Hmm, that tennis court looks like it will need repaving soon. At the time, I thought this exercise would help us adopt a wealthier mindset. We'd be inspired by all the wealthy homes. But it didn't work at all. We just weren't a match for those kinds of homes. They were too exciting to us. We couldn't imagine living there and having it feel normal. It was too big a leap, too impossible. Fast forward about 12 years to 2007. Aaron and I went shopping for a new house in Las Vegas, this time for real. Our price range was one to two million. We paid a little over $300,000 for our previous home, so this was a big step up. But this time, when the realtor took us around, it was totally different than when we were looking at homes in Rancho Santa Fe. This time, we could actually imagine living there and having it feel normal to us. We were mildly excited, but not overwhelmingly so. We looked at many different homes and ended up buying our first choice. Years ago, this house would have seemed amazing or extravagant to us, but now it just feels normal to live here. It actually surprises me when people visit and seem overwhelmed or amazed by it. We certainly enjoy living here, but it isn't amazing or overwhelming to us. Do you ever buy things for yourself that seem like normal purchases, but which other people might consider an extravagant or wasteful luxury? Have you ever bought a cup of coffee or a bottled water? If you buy such items regularly, you probably don't consider them luxuries. They're just normal purchases. But many people would disagree and say you're being incredibly selfish and wasteful. You don't need coffee, and you could just as easily drink tap water, you elitist pig. My point is to demonstrate that if you think something is out of reach for you, it is. If you think it's normal or expected, it becomes so. Realize that your comfort zone is totally arbitrary, though. To many people on Earth, getting adequate nutrition is a luxury. To some people, a million-dollar home would be slumming it. You define your own comfort zone. Imagine having 10 times as much cash and income as you have now. Would it make you uncomfortable, at least initially, if you suddenly found yourself there? Not in fantasy, but in reality. Would you feel awkward, uncertain, unworthy, or anxious? What would it take for you to embrace the mindset that this higher level of abundance is perfectly normal for you? Just because you've been conditioned to believe a certain level of wealth is normal for you doesn't mean that standard is objectively meaningful. You needn't spend the rest of your life remaining loyal to arbitrary inherited beliefs. Money and the Law of Attraction I know it may seem counterintuitive to aim to feel normal instead of excited when it comes to earning more money. The truth is that too much excitement will actually block you from receiving larger sums because that probably isn't how you'd feel if you were actually there. If you think X dollars is a large sum, and the amount makes you anxious or excited, 
you simply won't be able to attract and hold X dollars. If you really had X dollars and could hold on to it easily, how would you feel about it? It would seem as normal to you as your current financial equilibrium. In this case, the proper application of the law of attraction is actually to dampen, not to magnify your emotions, such that the new level you want to reach begins to feel normal, expected, and believable. Otherwise, you're holding yourself in a state of disbelief. If reaching your goal seems like a miracle or a monstrous windfall, you're actually pushing it away from you. This is true not just with money, but with anything else you might wish to attract, including new relationships, career advancement, spiritual development, health gains, etc. General enthusiasm about your goals is fine, but if you're holding yourself in a state of awe and amazement when you think about them, it's a safe bet you'll never get there. If you want to enjoy more financial abundance, you must learn to become comfortable with the kinds of changes that currently make you feel uncomfortable. You just listened to part two of the post titled Money and the Law of Attraction by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And before we go, if you want to discuss this or any of our episodes, plus be in contact with some of the hosts of the podcast in the Optimal Family, all you have to do is come join our Facebook group, which you can find by searching for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts in Facebook, or the shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. That's gonna do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the Thursday show tomorrow with a post from Kristen Wong. That's where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.